the Collegiate Corral embarked on a series of commissionings of uh, Peter Menon and, and Norman Della Gioia and others, uh, American, young American composers, and Hindemith was one of the bright stars in the same sort of generation as, uh, as Bartok and Stravinsky. So it would, it would be a great thing if we could get this world-ranking composer who happened to be here simply under duress of, of necessity. If we could get him to write a piece, and it's really ludicrous to think of it now. The commission which he accepted was a commission for $1,000, and he wrote this 65-minute piece, which he dearly loved. When the composer writes, he knows that he wants this loud and he wants it beginning softly, but he doesn't indicate how you get there. He also doesn't indicate always in, in, any, in, in any one of these, these voices, one is more important than the others. So some are accompanying and some are principal. So what I'm doing is, is, is letting the player knows immediately on his part as he approaches it, or the principal or whether it's subsidiary, whether he's supposed to listen to something else and play it as, or, or play it as, as soloistically as the important, as, as, the, as the really structurally important part. For instance, the principal theme is dee dee pee pum, and and if you play each note, you get so you, exactly the same dynamic. You get one team, 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 um, instead of tee tee tee, leaning into it and, and and making a phrase out of it. The, the composer, you know, Beethoven should be writing his 10th symphony rather than worrying about little things like this. He's got more important things to do. He can't stop for all this nitty gritty. And, and, and uh, this, is, this, is, this is the performer's responsibility. And in case of a conductor, it's, it's, the, it's the conductor's responsibility to give as much information as is helpful to every, every because n none of the other None of the other people have had the privilege of looking at the score. They haven't seen the complete work. All they have is their own part. And so you're trying to give them an inform information which, is, which enables them to, to move into there to serve the, the fabric of the, whole, of the whole piece. Since I have to know at this point, the player place from sort of note to note, but I have to begin a, bat a different pattern here for a four beat measure than I begin for a three beat measure. So I have to, I have to know at this moment how long this measure is going to be over here. And, and he, he's written up here three and four, but he's never let you know when, when, when they're three and when they're four. You see, so he goes back and forth between three and, so I'm, and I, I color code that, that catches my eye and I, and I'm color. This is those are three beats. It obviously would be better if I had the whole thing memorized. <laughs> but it's a it's a long song. If you find yourself singing a major or a minor triad, you're probably wrong if, unless it's the last note. <laughs> if, uh, if you're singing minor, if you sing, you know, major seconds or, or fourths or sixths, you're safe. 
only sing minor seconds or major sevenths when it's in root position. And, 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 then, and then, then you say, ready, here we go. Sing one and two and three, because it gives us two chances to identify the note. And, <laughs> sir, uh, and one and two. A T and one. for the choir because it's a language which is not most most harmonic language and are, are built upon relationship of thirds a chord plays you play one then you play a third note above it and you play a third above that and you play another third note above and, 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 and but Hindemith will will only use triadic harmony will, will seldom use triadic harmonies except as conclusions uh, and, and most of the times you're you're working with 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 second and, and seventh relationships. You're working with with dissonances that are uh, that are very consciously. Uh, while, while each line sort of makes makes a good sense of its own, it arrives at it arrives in conjunction with other lines, uh, not at not at not at, not, at, not at what we 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 sort of are, are accustomed to. So so its language is is a little difficult. Uh, it it becomes less and less difficult, and as as uh, obviously as you become familiar with it, and you also begin to hear more implied because he was so conscious of the overtone series. You begin to hear and and this uh, you know the, 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 the will generate this tone, and 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 eventually I mean you can even by. Uh, Yeah. And then probably you would get this, this, this. You see, and and the point is, he's, he's so so conscious of that 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 you begin to hear, you begin to hear hear more of, of this natural, uh, elemental, uh, physical acoustic. And Accent the little note a little. And two and T. No, no end. No end. You have a comma, don't you? If had we had we not observed it, had, had we been doing text. I could have screamed my head off for the next five minutes, and you still would never make the comma. But if I stay, ask you to say, put not the end in, it's surprising you learn it with only three or four times. <laughs> the other thing I want to say is that maybe a word should be said about what we call count singing, and that is that, that um, believe me, this is not only a faster way to make music, but, but it never, it's a never ending source, source of, 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 of improvement of the product. It, it's an extraordinary help in enunciation. Obviously, most, most of, the, most of the, the, the problem of choral enunciation happens because you have to get 100 to 200 people or 30 to 200 people to coincide absolutely particularly where the, where the consonants arrive. You know, and and uh, and the only way you can do it is if everybody if if everybody is not following a beat but making a beat, and not only following the sort of the the, the major beat of the measure, but thinking in terms of of divisions of the beat of into eighth notes or into triplets or into sixteenth notes or into thirty second notes, then it's possible to get to get clarity of enunciation. So okay, let's go numbers, one and two and three and one and two, three and one. And There are two major responsibilities. The first is to build a choir. The second, I suppose, is to build a choir. And the first is to build the work. If, 
you're doing Brahms or Verdi or a familiar piece, your choir is going to come together faster. And also, there's no doubt that uh, Brahms and Verdi and Bach uh, and Mozart build their own, are their own disciplinarians in certain in certain ways, and their own now, teachers in certain ways. D natural for the basses, an F sharp for the tenors, and an E notch for the altos, a G sharp for the sopranos, and sing your text in tempo. And a four, two, three, four, two. Oh. Oh. No, 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 I don't hear, I don't hear the tenor and the alto m m syllables. Pow, w, full, pow. Again, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, pow, w, full, pow. No, 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 see, you also have to cut through. You have to sing that 16th note strong enough to cut through the whole choir sustaining a vowel. Pow, w, full, and w, it has to be as, it would be, we would hear it if you sang, sang a D. A powderful, powderful. We would hear it if you sang a D consonant. How strong do you have to make a W to equal the strength of a D explosive consonant? Your W has to become an explosive consonant. Ready? Again? And one, two, three, four, five. Oh, powerful, powerful. Too late. Well, no, 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 hold it this time. No, no, don't go on, don't go on. Powerful, one and two, da -di. And you went one and two, da -di -di. And you treated it instead of, yup, pa, 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 pa. Here we go. Again. And uh, one, two. Oh, oh, That's the first time I've heard it out here. Now it has to be enormously strong. Again. And uh, one, two. Oh, oh. In singing in music, we're obliged to sing every sound of every syllable, not, not obliged to sing words. And English is terribly difficult to sing. Anybody who's sung in chorus has sung, you know, a requiem mass of Mozart or one of the masses of Verdi or something. And, and Latin is the e easiest language to sing because it doesn't have diphthongs and triphthongs, compound vowels, and doesn't have as many interruptive uh, uh, consonants which have to be sounded so carefully and pedantically even as uh, English does to, to, to make sense. Take it E natural, unison. Now sing the text, or syllable by syllable, each syllable one beat. O powerful western fallen star, one syllable for one beat. Ready? And now sing. O powerful western Now, I get west, what we should have, western fall. We need the neutral syllable between western and the fall. You have two, two, two consonants. Mark it, mark it. O powerful where stern the fall, ready? And uh, now sing. O powerful western fall. I think you may need a little bit of powerful aware. Powerful aware. To make, to get the oo, the, 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 the oo in the beginning of the oo where. Ready? Pow, powerful aware. And now sing. O West, stern, the fall. West, stern, the fall. Again, and the one, two. Oh, oh powerful, the western, the fall, the fall, the star. Fall, fall, and the star. Fall, and the star. Put another one in. Ready? Oh, powerful, and the one, two. Oh, powerful, the western, the fall. We could begin to work now on the diphthongs and have O shades of night because we can't sing an A without having a disappearing E. We can't sing an I without having a disappearing E. Aight, light. You can't sing an O without having a disappearing O. O, O, O shades of. You see, it's extraordinarily complex. Extraordinarily. And anybody who thinks they can handle text and pitches at the same time is just insane. We can't even handle text by ourselves now singing unison, you know, on a monotone. Ready? And a one, two. 
By forcing everybody to sing the text in unison, then they begin to think of, of, of how each syllable is formed of several different sounds. Each consonant is an explosion sound. And people forget and, and are, are, are very thoughtless in their own speech that, uh, that, that a, a word that like that has a T at the end. They'll say, oh, that's so-and-so instead of that's and you know, that's so and so instead of that so and so well when you have when you when you when you straighten when you when you uh, lengthen a word like that to one or two one or two seconds at which you may in music you know you'll you'll have you may hold one vowel you may hold one one syllable for as long as uh, uh, as eight measures you know something like that. that means that 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 the final consonant has to come at a particular time and it has to be followed if there's another consonant which begins a word there has to be a space a neutral syllable in between you you, you say uh, uh, that uh, 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 that uh, gobbledygook, that, and you don't go, that gobbledygook, that uh, gobbledy, and, and so, so by, by, by forcing everybody to sing the text in unison and have them sing only one syllable at a time, only this one, then they, 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 they begin to, begin to think of, of, of how each syllable is formed of several different sounds. O oh, heart surrounding cloud end now begin. O oh, heart surrounding the cloud that will not free my soul. All right, now sing your own, sing your own uh, rhythms, but sing them on these pitches. Ready? And uh, one, two. Good. I didn't hear Loe. I didn't hear Loe. You're, you're, now, this is infinitely more difficult because some of those things that we had, you know, a full second to do with, with, with each syllable on a second on a monotone now have only a 16th note or a 32nd note. That means that to get the neutral syllable in, you have to divide your 16th note in two and make each, you know, make the principal vowel a 32nd and make the, then the neutral syllable, which follows the consonant, a 32nd. Ready? Here we go again. Poco marcado. And a one, two. Be sure that the be sure that the principal vowel gets on the beat, you know. So because it's the one that makes the principal pitch, and put all those other things ahead of the beat. Here we go, and it's getting great. You're, some of you, I can even think, give me the sensation that you're trying. And one, two, three, one, two. Oh. Now sing your proper pitches. And don't be expressive, just be disciplined. Ready? And uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh. You're singing too loud to be disciplined, you know. If you if you generate that much sound, then you cannot make your neutral syllables that, and, and you can't make your silences mean as much. Now everybody, sopranos down an octave, and one, two, three, four, five. Oh. Oh. 
Soprano, alto. Get off of it, my. Is it? Do you have it marked staccato? Yep. Do you have a rest marked after it? Yep. Well, well, why don't I mean, a comma marked after it? Well, put a sixteenth note rest or something, my. So, three and a four and a four. Good. Now, it's surprising how much of the text comes through with this attention to detail, and, 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 uh, and, and one actually hears it. Um, now, have a big, big, wonderful night, so you're going to have a great, big, beautiful morning. <laughs> Be safe. Be safe on these beautiful streets. I, I like uh, singing in English. Yes, it's a beautiful language for uh, singing. Very expressive uh, accentuation and uh, the sounds of the vowels are uh, so beautiful. <laughs> I like. <laughs> when we are singing in French. We uh, we often make mistakes <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, singing, uh, how to say, lazily. We, we, we are lazy in our own language too. <laughs> and, but uh, I think that um, we, we should sing our own language like a foreign language. And we, we must, because it's not uh, an everyday language singing. It's an uh, expression, it's, uh, we, we are, uh, in a stage position, so we have to express and make the words uh, the more clear possible. Can you get a TR ahead of the beat? Trees, trees again. Pale green leaves begin on pale. Ready? Now. Is it necessary to, to point out? that the syllable trees was, is a single syllable word, but it has t, an r, an e, and it has z, and it has four sounds in it. And what we're after is to sing the four sounds. And the word pale is a single syllable word, but it has a p and an a, and a disappearing e, pe, e, and an ul at the end, so it has four sounds. And we're obliged to make all four sounds. Leaves, ul, e, v, z, of the, Trees, trees, prolific. Ready, we go. With the fresh. We need fresh a little bit more. And now. With the fresh sea, it's coming, it's coming. Let's uh, front row stand up and face the rear. Rear row stand up and face the front. <laughs> Here we go. One and a two and a three. Hello, buddy. Bravo. It's him. When 
facing across from one another, close enough so that they can hear from one another. They'll Im immediately begin to, to correct one another as to intonation, and they'll begin to try to make a common sound. And they, that is to say, they'll begin to try to make a common pitch, a common vowel, a, a common metric, a common duration. And all of this makes great choral singing possible because it's impossible without absolute unification of each section. Tenor! Sopranos, you wandered all over the place, depart, and you slowed down, and, the, and you didn't keep up with the tenors at all that were really yada da di ba da di pa da da. It, it just didn't, it didn't, didn't work at all. You sing, you sing independently. When you get long notes, they're you know they're like Pavarotti. They just just, just stay there, sit there. Be seated, face the front, everybody. Here we go again. Sixty-three. It's as difficult to sing in tempo as it is to sing in tune. I mean, it doesn't come naturally, you know. It particularly doesn't come naturally if you're singing in three. Because you don't have three legs or three arms or three eyes. What comes naturally is, is, is obviously digital and pedal. You know? And, and man is an, is an ambi, an ambi, ambi creature. And, 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 if, and, and, and everything that, that is triplet is off balance. And, 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 and one has to work at making these, these, things, these, these things right. If you had three legs, as we say, the, you know, our marches would be waltzes. Ready? Ready? Here we go. One and a two and a three. One. I say one other thing to and qualify what what I, what I said in criticism a moment ago, and don't think that don't think that you're being persecuted if if if, if you're stopped for this. You know, a, a great string quartet. I've been present in the rehearsals of the Guarnieri Quartet and also the Juilliard and so on, and and the Cleveland Quartet and so on, and 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 they'll spend they'll spend 15 to 20 minutes trying to get one bar triplets against against duplets, you know, so that it actually absolutely gets together. And, and, and here we got 160 people who scarcely know each other, you know, and 50 to 60 voices on a part, and, and, and you've got more opportunities for error than you have for success. You know, you have, you have to simply work at this desperately hard. It isn't, it isn't easy. One and the two begin. <laughs> Think of one other thing, which is which is good now. Think of each beat as you know as a hot plate, and you want to get off of it. You know, you touch it either with the foot or with the you know to, to, to get off as fast as you can off of it. Get the rise off of it. You know, don't sit on it. Otherwise, you end up with the with with, with, the, with the, the the manufacturer's impression on your soul. Really, <laughs> at least one of them. Uh, in, in, Almost always, the confusion in this fugue is so great that it's it, you know it's, it's dragging at itself. You got you got somebody hanging on here and somebody hanging on there. Everybody bounce and touch the beat as though it's something hot and get off of it. One and two and three. The problem with the fugue is there are four texts going on at the same time, four different texts, and each of the texts they could be the same text, but they would be maybe a beat apart or two beats apart, or, or a beat and a third apart, because he's a willful guy, and to get a little bit of more dislocation, instead of the making exactly two beats apart, he's liable to make it a, a completely false relationship, to shake the psyche a little bit more. No, 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 this is, this is resting too much in terms of the, of the last, of the third and the sixth eighth note. And you go, ta ti a ti 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 Any 
Sopranos on that, on, on, on the alto entrance at the top of page 73, you don't. Uh, the lower, uh, the, the lowest uh, one third of the second, second, second Sopranos sing the alto entrance on that A flat. Violet, violet purple. You have to uh, get the principal voice in a much stronger profile, and, and, and so you, you keep constantly adding, whether it's the alto tenor or bass or, or soprano, which happens to have the principal voice at that moment, you keep adding to their sections and taking away from others until you balance not only among the choir itself, but in terms of what the orchestra is going to do when it gets here. time take uh, take take 10 now you can't work this intensely without having a little rest take 10 we'll take another 10 in a little while you'll sing four notes the bottom quarter of the tenors will sing four notes here and then a third of them will go up and sing two notes there and and then double the bases on their solo passage and it's, it's very interesting though very interesting I've I've, I've uh, I have a choir in South Texas, where I'm from, uh, and it's a small choir, and this, this year I had only two altos in my section, and when I got some of the notes that Mr. Shaw sent us for these pieces, I said, whoa, wait a minute, maybe I can use the same thing, and mm -hmm. many times I had the tenors, the high tenors, doubling the altos, and, uh, or I had the uh, second sopranos doubling the, the altos in different sections to get that particular sonority. It's very important, very interesting what he's doing. I'm extremely impressed. This is the first time I ever worked with him. His technique is more to add voices rather than have people sing louder. Oh. He wants people to sing comfortably and he'll add voices if he wants it larger. So it's, Genius, <laughs> it's, much, really. it's much, much easier to <laughs> sing, that's for sure. Don't sing the dot quite so much. So make make that little crescendo. But just before thing, stop the sound. So you sing thing death once again. To sing. No 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 no. You 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 accelerated on round the world. Undulate around the world. Undulate. One, two, sing. Undulate around the world. Now, some of you, some of you are still making the music the, the vehicle of your voice instead of making your voice the vehicle of the music. And you think more of your you think more of your voices than you do of his composition, and, and, and you know and more, more centrally located on on that. Instead of making making the voice the servant of the music, you make the music the servant of the voice. Undulate, and uh, one, two, three. Soon. Uh -huh. 
and a one. Delicate, two. Now, delicate to death together. Delicate. One, two, and three, and one. Delicate. No, delicate to death. Delicate to death. Ready? One, two, and three, and one. Delicate. Right, right, right. Uh, I don't know any other way to, to get that sort of togetherness without going through every step that we've gone through. And you're 10 times as fast as most choruses. You know, and most choruses never reach the, where we began. Isn't that just terrible? You know, because the music has not yet begun as far as we're concerned. It's not yet begun. Almost occasionally here in Europe. Darker mother. Maybe it'll begin with a darker mother. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Mm. In, in terms of ease of fluency of reading and so on, he could have written it just 4-4, four, four, you know, instead of 3 plus 3 plus 2. If you look back at page 39, see all the, all the swirls in the violins? All those eight notes, and particularly page 41. I asked him, why did you... How did you arrive at your scales in measure 59, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62? He says, I put all the wrong notes I could in so it would sound swirlier. <laughs> he, wanted, this is the, 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 he wanted the wind, the rush of the wind. And, 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 he, and he didn't count on the, the orchestra's ability to be, to be able to play them. You know, it, it becomes slightly, slightly blurrier on, as it goes up. And, and it's sort of, again, the same sort of uh, fiendish gleefulness. He writes this stuff, three plus three plus two, instead of two plus two plus two plus two, which he could. Ready? Let's begin again, top of the page, and one, two, two, uh, three, two, three, and one, two, and one. Hindemith despised music that, that wasn't made for love that was made only for professional reasons, was made for money. And he spoke about friends of his who said that they couldn't afford to play chamber music anymore because they couldn't afford to give up their solo careers, you know. He, he saw that, that music without, uh, without some sort of moral commitment to it and to its, to its, to its value aesthetically and, and I think really ethically. He, th he thought, for instance, that the only way that, that, that uh, musicians could uh, preserve their amateur standing and their love for music was to give up playing their instruments and sing, and sing, and, and the smaller the choir, the better. Five or six voices, and he spoke affectionately of the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries when families would gather around the table and sing at night and sing what he said was the greatest music that has ever been written for Western civilization, and the motets of the, of the 15th, 16th, 17th century. And, and, and he, he sort of, uh, all the, 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 the music that that sort of fed into the glamorized music, the richness of the, the, and the sophistications of color, which fed into, uh, fed into a sort of a Hollywood craftsmanship or a Hollywood sonority, he really despised. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's almost as though sometimes he tried to, tried to make it a little ugly, you know, because so, he, he didn't want to sound too pretty. But, but, uh, but this is a piece that, that has has pretty 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 things in it. Let's do the duet. The do the duet first, and then we'll go. We can, how are you? Fine. Are you? Oh, <laughs> trying to get here all day. Have plenty of time to warm up. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not one note. <laughs> Fled forth to the high, he receiving like the talks not down to the shores of the water, the path by the swamp in the dimness, to the solemn shadowy seas and most. The seamer so shy to the rest receives me. The gray brown bird I know 
Uh, I tend to be very emotional, and this piece is so emotionally stirring that it's it's uh, it's hard to not weep all over the stage a lot of times. Anyone who's ever lost someone that they loved, a husband or a loved one, the images that are evoked in this piece are very moving, and they touch you to wherever you are in your, your grieving process. I think what makes one performance different from another is your own experience that you bring to that particular piece. It makes it real for an audience. You can certainly sing all the notes perfectly and sing all the dynamics perfectly and put the right stress on the word, but, but it's more than that. It's the unsaid thing that, that makes the connection for the audience. Now, now. Piano, and again a little darker, a little darky. Dark, and uh, one, two, three, four. Try it without Bill, try it once, and, and come in almost urgent. I give you my sprig of lilac, <laughs> nor for you. Okay. You know, sort of, and Take come it. in in tempo. Ready, we we'll again. I give you my sprig of lilac, nor for you. It's all right, isn't it? Blossoms and branches green. You can't not be affected by the poetry, and, and I think you know Whitman was writing about Lincoln, but it's it's such a timeless way of writing poetry that it's that it could be any age, any time. With Whitman, the, he changes what he's saying so that, it, that it's always interesting, it's always different, and he gives you the unexpected, and that's uh, and that combined with Hindemith, of course really gives you the unexpected. Oh, how shall I warble myself for the dead one there I loved? And how shall I deck my song for the large sweet soul that has gone? And what shall my perfume be for the grave of him I love? Behold a cortege 1,700 miles long, night and day for two weeks. In Richmond, Indiana, whose population must have been countable in the hundreds, 10,000 people stand bareheaded at 3 o'clock in the morning as the train passes. Bonfires, children on fathers and grandfathers' shoulders, cities and citizens draped in black. In a country of 30 million people, a land which stretched from the eastern to the western seas, seven million mourners line the funeral route, nearly one out of every four living persons. 
At the various functionary stops for formal viewing, 1,500,000 mourners file past the face of the dead president, one twentieth of the population of the just barely reunited states. What is the depth and breadth of love and grief which keeps one fourth of a wounded, exhausted nation standing at parade rest for 21 times 24 hours? Isn't that a long black trail? Lincoln saying, don't it seem strange to you that I, who could never so much as cut off the head of a chicken, should be elected into the midst of all of this blood? Whitman saying, when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed, I mourned. Read them and weep. They're glorious words. See you tomorrow. He insists you've got to care. I mean, you can't, you can't do this without caring. You can't walk around the edge of a great choral work or any piece of art. You can't walk around the edge of it and not care. I mean, you've got to, you've got to care, which is why he spends the time and energy he does interpreting the, the text, writing about the text, transmitting his thoughts to people. Um, and he, you know, the statement he made in the in the in the question and answer period, I, you know, is is true. This stuff changes lives. This is this is not this is not about waltzing into town, singing a concert, and going away. This is about never quite being the same on the basis of this combination of pieces of music this combination of orchestra and voices, this combination of circumstances surrounding the performance and, and, and so on. You, 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 can't, you can't go away from this as though it, it didn't matter, because it does. I, I think that, that uh, Carnegie ought to build these, uh, these experiences and at the bottom say, catharsis guaranteed. <laughs> Stretch. Now, that's only piano. That's no color. That's no drama. And oh, one, two, one. The night in silence under many a star, the ocean shore, and the husky whispering. We can do it in tempo. Ready? And uh, one. Whisper. One, two. The night in silence. Oh. Under many stars. Now get brighter. The ocean shore. And the soul. Come on. One. Two, three, one, and the soul, and the soul. No, 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 there's no, no intensity on the quarter notes. It's, it's the mistake we make when we consider that, that, that piano is a lessening of tension, and forte is, is tension. I'm talking about tension and energy, you know, and power and strength and these things. And piano is more and more energy gathered into less and less sound, and you make it weaker and weaker and weaker. And lesser and lesser instead of more and more and more and more until it becomes too important to, to sing, sing loudly about. You can only sing quietly because you mean it so much. Make more intention, make more tension into the piano. Two, three, one. And Gratefully nestling, urgently in terms of consonants. One, two, three, go. Gratefully nestling close to the All right, now what I miss is I, da da ba. 
everybody sing more marcato. Bottom of the previous page. One, two, three, one. Except the measure, which is the first measure at the top of page 125. I don't get tum tum ti ta tim tum tum pa pa. You know, the, com the first two measures. I don't get a complex, a compound rhythm there. Bite your, bite your own part. Here we go. One, two, three. If you can reach it. Two, one, two, three. Two, three. Oh. But it still isn't good enough. It still isn't marcato enough. It doesn't sound. It doesn't sound convinced. It sounds like a bunch of people exercising. Oh! It doesn't sound concise enough. Oh, for the um, shorten every syllable. Oh, for the p, pa pa pa. Close. In two, three, one. One, two, three. Wait for a downbeat, please. One, two, three. Return. Call that mezzo forte. Now let's have forte. One, two, three. Return. And crescendo it. One, two, three. Return. Come after one. One, two, three. Return. And finish. Oi! Oi! Ready? One. Two, three. With joy. And without taking a breath, go to the next one, but 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 a little bit less loud. Ready? I float. The second measure at the bottom of the page. One, two, three, one. It's not slurred. It's to thee. Three and uh, one. People, you don't understand what a, what a humongous, what a humongous gelatinous instrument the large choir is. You've got to be particularize your responsibilities. To thee and uh, one. Come on again. Separate two from thee and uh, one. To thee. TH, a little more TH. Now, what it lacked, sit down for a second. It's, it's not engaging in, in show business to, 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 um, to, to, to go back to the, to, to the, to, to the, the, the sort of back of conscious, conscious the, the sort of delirious state of a Walt Whitman that allows him to write this sort of urgency. You see, and it's as though every note in the piece is, is full of de delirium and, 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 and approach. I mean, you have, you have to either be Bach or a Mormon <laughs> to sing approach strong deliverous, you know? Yeah. And uh, for the rest of us, it's very, very frightening indeed. And, 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 and unless it has that edge of, 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 of emotional dream world in which all of us, you know, in which all of us share, it's just a tissue paper ornament. Now, it isn't, it isn't that, you're, that you're bad. 
is that the peace is, is greater than we are. But, but there's time to get it even, even right. And there's some noble, 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 fabulous moments. If I can remember the page. I... <laughs> all right, all right, great. We'll make her. Bye, get, 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 get. Hindemith calls for a lot of shifting of voices to achieve, a, to achieve balance. And uh, a good many of those are not to achieve uh, what would be a balance for uh, a cappella singing or for accompaniment by a piano, but are made necessary by orchestral accompaniment, which means that you have to uh, get the principal voice in a much stronger profile. You balance not only among the choir itself, but in terms of what the orchestra is gonna do when it gets here. Bite, bite the tempo and sing a little bit more, sing, sing at least one, one dynamic above what's printed. Here we go. That needs to be more. Mark it up, mark it up. Remember when did that ASTD mezzo forte. Now we'll have this, this will take some balancing problems, but we'll make face and get them when we get to them. End. from the tenors. Now that becomes a little bit heavy with the, with the percussion, with the timpani and the bass drum and the organ and the and the pedal. Only, but only a letter a letter B. It was great until then. Begin before, begin at letter A. Letter A, and no. The problem with the fugue is a problem of uh, of orchestral balance and uh, versus choral balance. Uh, principally because Hindemith has overmarked the orchestra dynamically, and one has to mark it way down, and hope that the orchestra, <laughs> when it when when it hears the uh, its own excitement, and it hears the excitement of the chorus, will hold back and play and play the narrower dynamic range. All right, now, now, now. Get down strings, is it marked in the second measure to get down to mezzo piano? Yeah, well, let's remember that's a, it's a qualification of piano, not a qualification of forte, you know? It's, it's a little bit louder than piano, but we're playing almost a qualification of forte. I cannot, I doubt that you can hear them sing at all down here. I can hear their vowels, but I can't hear their consonants. Now, suppose we play this substantially piano orchestra until we get to our solo measures, which I'll, I'll I'll conduct for you, and then work our way into it so that by the time we get to Carnegie tomorrow, we can, we can, you can play out a little bit. But now listen, listen to the fugue develop. The responsibility of the performer, and particularly the performer of, of works of this, of this kind, is to take the composer's intention at that moment and, and try to, for instance, the composer has, uh, he, he, wants, he wants a forte moment, or he wants a forte 10 seconds, and so he puts his, an F down for forte, but it's up to the performer and the, the person responsible to correct little, little inward things so that the, 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 the tutti comes out forte, but it comes out properly balanced.
on the downbeat. He wrote this for us. This is his, you know, this is his letter, autograph letter to me, you know, and to you. And, and it's just lordy. It's, it, it's, at, the, uh, it's at the top of, uh, of artistic sensibility and of affection for, the, for a fellow man. And now, I, he actually said, I'm sure it's true, he said to Otto Luning, he said, you know, the reason I write so much music is because so much of it's bad. But he put it up against, he put it up against uh, uh, Nene and, and Gesangner Partsen and stuff, you know. He, he didn't put, and, and the B minor mass and the St. Matthew Passion and such. And it is bad. I mean, the, the trombone can share the trombone sonatas and it, alongside of the St. Matthew Passion, you know. So are all, so is all the rest of mankind, you know. And, <laughs> you know, and, and singing a piece like this changes lives. God damn it, it changes lives. You don't think the same anymore. You don't cry over the same things. You don't, you don't love the same way. You're different. And, and, uh, and it's just too damn bad that, that, that humanity doesn't, isn't ready for it. That, that people aren't ready for it. You know, it did even, it did even change a, it cha might even change a vote in Congress or something, okay, you know. If, 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 if enough, it's, uh, it's, so that's, that's, what I, that's part of what I, I believe so much about the, the amateur arts. They're, they're, uh, you know, I, it's, it's great to, to, have, to, raise, to raise singers to professional responsibility. That's just fabulous. But, but our problem is to change, you know, not singers, but to change society. Do you consider yourself a teacher? I don't know. I don't. I don't I, I, if I'm smart, I don't consider myself. <laughs> Outside about a half. Outside about one. That's it. Inside about a half. Inside about a half. Inside a half. Inside a half. Well, outside now, a half. Well, take it out. Take it out. All right. That's okay. Inside, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We have enough time this morning to enjoy the velvet of the hall. Listen, listen. Ready, stand up, new o -wa. Same thing, beginning, new. Uh, o. That re six second reverberation. See, it's scarcely a second and a half, you know. It's not, it's not as much as you might, you might think, but the quality is absolutely delicious.
come lovely and soothing death. Ready? End. <coughs> flat by the time we finish that how much six or seven cents ten cents the thing that's always helpful to me is is if you repeat a note don't don't repeat it you know begin begin a new pitch uh, know that your body is uh, in the meantime that you've used up enough breath with that so that the vocal muscle is is, is is, is less ready to respond and it has less, less oxygen and so on. So improve your lie, you know. Pick up the ball and move it to where you can hit it. Here we go. I'll tell you what, do it, I hate to take the time for it, but this has worked enormously. Try to be, by the time we, we finish these six measures, try to be about a quarter of a step sharp. I mean, I mean, I mean, really work at it. I, I, with, with, with our choir at home, I'd ask them to be a half a step sharp. But try to be a quarter of a step sharp. And now. Keep going. You hold it to improve it. As long as you hold and no one We're a little sharp. What? A little sharp. Not nearly enough. How many of you tried to sharp? Well, see, it's that difficult to sing in tune. I mean, as, as, a, just a, as, a, as a physical proposition, not as a mental proposition, you know, sort of. The, the, voice, is, the voice is betraying us that much. Take it without my beating it. Stand up, ready? And, and, and hold this tempo and, and put every nuance in. But, but I mean, but, but, but your own sense of ensemble and your own, and your, so your own breathings and so on, I'll start you. And then, and then, and then don't forget this intonation thing. Keep sharpening. One and two and three. No, 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 no. You didn't sing lovely. You don't, you don't sense one another. And also you sing badly, bad, bad, lovely. You don't, and again, one, two, and listen.
Now, there's always one soprano who comes in ahead but prays. And obviously, this slows down a little bit here. And, and, and just sense your own sense of ensemble. Don't be the first one to respond to this miserable guy in the blue suit. Ready? <laughs> but, um, and for love, sweet love. And uh, one. Uh, and for love. Now, now try to be sensitive so that everybody everybody responds together. Again, and for love. And uh, one. And for love, sweet love, but praise. Now, don't let it go like this. But pray and let it bloom. Ready? But praise. One, two. But praise. Of sure and winding arms. One and two. Did you not hear what happened that one or two voices just, just don't have any sense of the ensemble of when the rest of you are coming in? Uh, it's, you see, it's a part of it. Mean, by, now, by now, you have certain responsibilities to one another. We've tried to, that is, now be seated a second. You know, you go, you, 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 go down, you go down like this with the Philadelphia Orchestra, and the sound comes, pow, you know. And, 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 you, and you go down like this with the Cleveland Orchestra and, and you start back and they'll decide when to begin, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and, and if, if it's a piano attack. And, and you, have to, you have to be sensitive to your group. And you're not. The durations of your silences are not, are not identical. Ready? Begin, but praise again, right? No, uh, yeah, take the last praise, letter B, praise for the sure and winding. Because somebody over here didn't hold the, the, the form and It's, it's not only, it's being sensitive to one another. I mean, music is just terrible when it's dictated from the podium or any place else. I, 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 want, to, I want to be with you, but you've got to be together. So I, could, I can't follow you 167 of you. I can only follow you when you're united. Could you hear that? Could you feel that delay? How many could, could sense it? We could come. Well, that's not enough, you see. Come, I'm ready. When thou must indeed come. And uh, to. Okay, we're ready. Okay, orchestra, anytime you wish. This is what Mr. Shaw will look like for about the first three minutes on stage. And then when he, he gets starts, warmed up. Then he gets warmed up. And then the hair goes into the face. And 
you know, he really starts to get into the music and the muscles start going and, and you can just, watching his face is almost too much for you to sing for. I mean, it just, you know, the emotion is all there and you, you know you need to watch him, but every second that you do, you just almost lose it because it's, it's just beautiful to watch him. Left side of the choir is so blurred. It's You're all the ladies in white. So oh, that yeah. <laughs> it's that angelic glow. It's a black and white. The path black is white, right? yeah. go past the bass drum and hang a right, yeah. and then between the first and second violins. Right, yeah. Well, yes, yes, but between, what about, I got two stanzas. First violins back there. Uh, Between the, the first to their right, to those ones that are tucked into their right. right to their right. Leave one, leave one, one desk all the way up. Walk, walk inside the first, the outside desk. All right. That's your close-up, Mr. Dumont. Is it mine? <laughs> mine decision? I was ready. Toy, toy. Thank you, sir. You speak of uh, Bernstein's Mahler, or you speak of, uh, you know, of, of Bruno Walter's Brahms, uh, and, uh, uh, and and uh, there's no doubt that you can recognize that. That is to say, but the the danger, it seems to me, is is to approach the composer as though you were trying to put your stamp upon him. I I, I think that the, the the, the the thing for the for the for the uh, for the con conductor and performer is to be as as, as a clear glass as possible and as, and, and and not as, as 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 shine his own light on the on the work, but let the work shine you know shine through. Now, somehow, that is also inescapable, in spite of a desire to be a, a you know a, a perfectly clear glass. Undoubtedly, I'm a little opaque here and there. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm sorry for that, but I'd like to be clearer if I could.
Good luck at I'll listen to those scores. Love you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.